the first era in humankind really captivates me. A lone unit wandering through the world looking for the answers to those really confounding questions like, can I eat that mushroom? Or what would happen if I tried to pet that stray animal? This experience speaks to me in a way that I can only describe as spiritual. Let's learn humankind. The first era of humankind plays out extremely differently than all of the rest of the game. You play as this single nomadic tribe with no real ties to the land, Even able to move around freely, trying to expand clever. and grow. So the way that we grow is by gathering food. If we gain 20 food, we'll be able to get a new unit added to our tribe. As hunters and gatherers, we can gain food either by picking up uh, the food curios that are here on the map to be able to gather them or hunting animals. But I'll get to that when we start opening those. Otherwise, here in the early stages, we are looking around at the map, trying to find what region we want to call home forever, basically. It is kind of a extended chance to be able to scout where your capital and initial land holdings are going to be, because we can, while we are a nomadic tribe, place down a uh, we can claim the territory by founding an outpost. This is actually a really great spot right where we started. <laughs> Amazing that we started so close to what would be a potentially incredible city, uh, even with some strategic resources here. But um, you are able to build these outposts and then those will ultimately turn into your cities. I want to go around for this food curio that we saw and then we can double back and Honestly, we're going to lock in and found this outpost. The, uh, the combination of food and production there is very good for a nice little start here. So we'll pick up this Full food curio, some wild berries giving us five food. Going. Once we reach 20 again, we will be able to expand our tribe. So now we're going to hop on to the river here. Rivers are very pivotal in the early eras because it takes up all of a unit's movement to be able to move onto those rivers but then once you are embarked on the river you can travel on them like roads and be able to follow them without taking um, any other movement penalties we're going to go ahead and put down this claim territory the game is suggesting that there is a rival spot over here that would also be good this is in a different territory we may also want to found here because that combination of food and production is also very good but this one is so well balanced 11 and 10 you get the river tiles and the forest tiles for production along with the extra resources we have um uh, luxury resources here and then a strategic resource and copper and a mystery resource a mystery box that we will be able to use in a later time we have a our first event here seed of an idea Yesterday, the tribe came across a vast tract of wild grain, the stalk swaying in the breeze like the wind playing over golden waters. The ground-grown grain could feed the tribe twice over, but one of the tribe elders had another idea. Instead of pounding the seeds into flowers, she suggests planting half of them so the grasses may return next summer. It is a curious idea at odds with the nomadic life, but perhaps a harbinger of the future. What should you do? So we have an option here to be able to grind all of the seeds into uh, food. And that would mean that we gain plus two food on city or outpost as long as we are a nomadic tribe. Or we can take a minus 25% cost in research of what is going to be one of the very first research projects uh, that we can embark upon. I actually like going for grinding here because we have founded our outpost extremely early. Usually I end up waiting a few more turns to be able to see more of the lay of the land before I lock in a spot. But it just, this this nice little bend in the river absolutely called our name. We're going to call this home. And so because we are founding this so quickly here, um, we are going to go for the additional food. Now, to be able to advance into the ancient era, which is going to be the birth of civilization here for us, we have a couple of criteria that we are trying to meet. We have three different categories that we can compete in to gain the star that will grant us fame, which is the scoring system for the entire game, and the ability to move up into the next age. So, we have a point of growth. Um, if our tribe just becomes large enough, we can found one of the early civilizations. So if we gain five population, we'll be able to advance. Also, if we become famous hunters, having uh, five successful hunts, 
will give us the star to advance. And finally, being able to gain 10 science through walking over these science curios that kind of represent the tribe a first taking a chance. A what is this? And a new extension of your empire's power, but also a new vulnerability. Uh, yes, the outpost has been established. Truly, truly wonderful. And so gaining these uh, science curios kind of represents the tribe taking time to learn about their surroundings and improve their way of life. We're going to snag this one. As you can see, the curios do respawn in areas that you have already traversed. They're just kind of, you know, naturally populating the area. You don't necessarily have to always be exploring new land to be able to find new curios. Now I am, <laughs> I really want to be able to put that extra, extra piece down here, another, another tower, but that's probably a little bit, getting a little bit ahead of myself. I should explore some more, try and grow the population of the tribe with only one unit. Um, we are a very small tribe indeed. A world aflame. In the distance, a thin cloud of smoke curls up into clear blue skies. Fire. Calling a few tribesmen, you run closer. The smell of cindered bark and burning pine growing stronger with each footfall. You spy dancing flames and suddenly find yourselves on the edge of a settlement on fire. Many of the structures are ablaze, but even with the smoke and flames, you can see these abodes are marvels of craftsmanship. You are about to direct your men to put out the fires with loose soil when you see short shadowed figures running away. Youths, they could become part of your tribe if you give chase now, but that would mean losing the secrets of construction. What is your choice? So we can either get a new army of refugees right next to our current party, or we can extinguish the flames and get again that 25% discount on one of the first research projects in the game. Well, like I was just saying, our population is very low. We're going to pick up chase and add these guys to our group. And we're just gonna have to figure out how they built their houses uh, some other way. There we are. So now we have the group of refugees and they can immediately slide over to pick up these berries. That might not have been the best decision because now the uh, quote unquote food production is scattered between the two tribes. Hopefully we will be able to like join together for a hunt or some other uh, situation. Now a culture has already been chosen. We got a little notification down here. A nomadic tribe reached the ancient era with the Harappans. So one of our opponents has already been able to advance into the ancient age. They are very far ahead of us at this point. Very far. Uh, hopefully we are able to get our act together and catch up. Um, we are going to run this other group. I'm going to keep the tribe split right now to be able to cover just a little bit more territory. Looking for more opportunities here. We'll embark on this river, and there we go. We found a little bit of food. And then up here, we're going to push inland to kind of explore this zone over here, though. I do want to double back around and be able to found um, the outpost on that adjacent on that adjacent area. Your cities are really dynamic here in humankind, being able to add... Um, adjacent zones to their influence by um, attaching outposts and even later on absorbing smaller cities into major metropolises is all uh, different different options that you will be given. So we we feel really good if we're able to settle the spaces right next to our capital and then we can either turn them into some of our first couple cities if they offer promise to expand, or we can just attach the outpost to the capital city and make that our our great marvel of the ancient world. We are going to embark onto this river, and we see here a border, a border for whoever Blue is. Right now, as a Neolithic tribe, we have no diplomacy options, no real understanding of how that would work. So we will see Another nomadic tribe has reached the next era with the Babylonians. There's a mammoth. One of the hunting options here in the game. Mammoths are extremely hard to bring down. So our single single unit tribe is not going to be able to fare very well hunting a mammoth. Ah, oh, and he's sitting he's sitting on the curio. That is unfortunate for us. Alright, well we'll wait for him to move. Take your time, Mr. Mammoth. Take your time. And we are going to explore around. We could really use some more influence. 
We want just a little bit more to be able to get this next outpost. Maybe we can find something in their territory, though it is unlikely as they will have probably picked it over. A third culture has already advanced to the next era, so we are significantly lagging behind. And that's kind of just the nature of this stage in the game, is that it is very given to variance. Um, you can be given... Time for your first battle? Ooh, they I have come out to attack us. Dying to see how your fight is handled on the side. No. The, uh, the attackers here, we don't even know who they are. But they do have scouts. And so that means that these are a group that has already advanced. And they have improved their tribesmen to more strong fighting forces. Well, we will run away then. We don't want to lose any tribesmen right now. Losing population this early would be devastating to us. So, we are on the hunt for more. Here they come. They're chasing us. I hate this. <laughs> They're chasing us down. Very aggressive neighbors. Very unfortunate for us. And another mammoth blocking our path. Of course. I mean, why wouldn't he? Hmm. We can double back or we can wait to be able to continue to explore somewhat new territory. I suppose an option would be to move these units back and around. We want to get out of those other scouts' way. We don't really see anything up here. This land has not offered us very much. Yep. We'll slink down and pick up this curio. So now we are just one science curio away from being able to advance to the next era. Hopefully we can find that very soon. The Fungal Hoarder is an event that we have found. The shift to fixed abodes hasn't been easy for the tribesmen and women who'd settled in the outpost, but they'd persevered and now thought of this land as home when they discovered that one of their number had been hoarding mushrooms that he'd found in a nearby cave for himself. It was a great blow to the spirit of the tribe. Now they want to banish him for his greed, but that would mean being deprived of the location of the mushroom field. What is your reckoning? So we can either choose to banish him and get minus 25% on city defense research cost, we can protect him to be able to get all of the mushrooms, or we can retain him to be able to gain um, two science forever. Hmm. Being able to get Bountiful to get that extra food on what is going to be our capital. I wonder if this cancels because it has the name of the outpost here. This is going to change when it becomes a city. And once we reach the ancient era, this first outpost is going to become our capital city. So, picking this might just get canceled within a turn or two. Picking this, like two science, is not a big deal. But, early on, your science, your science values is very low. So, I think we're going to grab this, actually, and retain him. Ah, it gives you the science immediately, which is a boost to being able to advance. That is the key. Well, 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 well. Very, very interesting. And now, because we broke the, the barrier here, 10 scientific points, we are able to pick a tribe's legacy. We can either become makers, farmers, or storytellers. You stand at a crossroads. For many moons, the tribe has trekked the wilderness slowly, torturously, leaning on secrets of this world, learning the secrets of this world, how the materials hidden in the deep places and in plain sight might be fashioned to the tribe's advantage, how the beasts and plains of the lands and seas can be most fruitfully harvested, and how myths and stories can glacially but inescapably give power over our greatest enemies, other tribes. Now you must decide in what domain the tribe will truly sharpen its knowledge of the ages to come. Will you be renowned as makers, farmers, or charmers? So you can pick. This is either going to give you an increase of production, food, or science based on your population size. And you can either use this to accentuate a strength that you want to cultivate in your civilization or to put a band-aid onto a weakness and these are not going to be very significant in the end game but in the early game they are meaningful because all of your production values are going to be really low so having the additional industry can snowball your civilization in terms of giving you access to improvements and more districts 
quicker in your city and then you're kind of relying on those to be very beneficial to you and what gets you ahead. The farmers giving you more food will give you a larger population and then with extra citizens you can give them extra jobs that are going to just increase your overall production. And finally, storytellers giving you that additional science will be able to give you the scientific improvements faster or hopefully in keeping pace with your opponents. And then those give you access to better and more efficient technologies all the time. Science and industry are very closely tied because what good is new scientific progress and th learning new things to build if you don't have the production to actually be able to keep up with building them. There are some just straight up passives. I'll show you the tech tree in the next episode when we get to the ancient era. Uh, you can unlock some passives which are pretty good but most of your scientific advancement is going to be things that you then have to turn around and build. But I am going to pick storytellers. I want to be able to keep our scientific progress going because I have found that it can very quickly lag behind what the uh, opponents are doing. Now we are able to enter the next era. We're going to take a moment here to look at where our tribe has come. We honestly <laughs> kind of just locked in our, our starting spot as our capital city, but it was a very beneficial spot. Unfortunately, extremely close to an aggressive enemy attacking us with those scouts, but we have kept our tiny population alive at least and found some other pretty lush areas that we would like to expand to building a outpost over here and then all this river over here looks very desirable to me as well potentially putting an outpost down here i just i'm curious if how incredible some of these spots are 10 16 25 19 7 both of these uh really good spots so future city plan to be settled down here in this um river valley and then Unfortunately, because we are moving up now, this will not actually be able to be our capital, even though it is a slightly better location. Though this location is nothing to sneer at. So we are going to look over at what we have. So as you advance, humankind is incredibly uh, unique in that every era you're going to pick a different culture that you get to play as. And as cultures get drafted, then the people who advance slower have fewer to pick from. So we have had the Babylonians the Harappans and the Mycenaeans all taken away from us. There are six different factions in the game. Um, so we are kind of in the second wave of people advancing to the ancient era. All of the different factions have a legacy trait. So this is going to be something that will stay with us for the entire game. And so obviously these legacy traits for the ancient era civilizations are really pivotal because they will be with us for the longest. And then every faction is going to have a unique um, building. It is usually a district. Usually what it does is it just replaces one of the normal districts that you can build. And it's a little bit better in a special way, but you're limited in how many you can build. And then they have a unique military unit that similarly replaces one of the existing military units of the era and is going to have a little bit stronger combat strength and some kind of nuance to how it can perform in combat. Though there are some of them that are a little bit more unique, like here the Assyrians with the uh, Dunu, or it is actually the, the Hittites. They get the Awari, which will automatically upgrade the regular outposts that you build um, rather than a district that you can build. I have my eyes here on the Egyptians. They are a builder-focused civilization, so you will gain more fame, which means more victory points when you achieve um, the builder stars. We get grand planners, plus one industry on tile producing industry, and minus 10% on district industry cost. That means all of the districts that we build forever are going to be 10% cheaper which you do build a lot of them, I can assure you. So that is going to pay out big time. We get the Egyptian pyramid giving us influence, industry, minus stability. Um, so the industry and minus stability are always part of these districts. And then we also get um, additional industry per adjacent makers quarters, and we get additional workers working on industry. So the the kind of bonus here is that it gives you a little bit more strength for being positioned around other maker quarters. And it gives you the additional influence, which is useful for establishing outposts and then attaching them to cities, etc., etc. And then our chariot here is a ranged chariot 
unit able to kind of kite around the battlefield that looks really interesting. It does require horses, which we do not have in our capital, but we would have access to them if we build our outpost just over here where we were sighting a very desirable city location. So I think that we can manage pretty well if we pick them up. We are going to lock the Egyptians in and then I'm going to send you over to be able to see the beautiful cutscenes that the game has for the different eras. I'm going to show the very beginning of the game and then the entry into the ancient era and we'll be picking up in the next episode playing as the Egyptians. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode. Our universe contains infinite stories. Most of which are about rocks and ice at sub-zero temperatures in a vacuum. Rather boring. However, on a small damp rock, there is a story that bears a second look. It's your story. But the first four billion years or so mostly concern amino acids. Not much of a page turn. But then, over time, the amino acids bond together and things start to get interesting and a bit drier. A certain subspecies of hominid discovers that you can do more with a sharp rock than annoy your little brother. Tools and weapons are invented. The hominids begin to cooperate. Fire becomes a servant rather than an unpredictable force of nature. They learn to tan the skins of animals for clothing. They learn ways to record and probably exaggerate their adventures. Eventually, these tribes learn to build shelters and immediately hold the first barbecue parties. This is the dawn of humankind. Struggle and cooperation have been rewarded. The Neolithic era draws to a close. The whole world beckons. This tribe has come far, but the rest of their story is your story. You are the one who will build them into a great civilization. How far will you push humankind? Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. 